Greetings, pilot, and welcome to X4 Foundations. Pilot? Always good to see a new recruit. I am in charge of coordinating the Terran Protectorate's response to the Xenon threat. My priorities are twofold. To keep the Soul System safe from all harm, and to direct the Intervention Corps towards the enemy holed up in the furthest reaches of the universe. The military would not have approached you if you weren't a friend of the Protectorate. Xenon forces are vast, so we are always in need of manpower. Since it is our mission to seek out all Xenon strongholds, our military campaigns regularly push into hostile territory, far away from any possible support. Because of this, we can only recruit the most capable pilots. You will have to submit to a test. Your race and former affiliations do not matter, as long as you swear allegiance to our cause. You will be granted the choice of many tasks, from combat deployments to construction work. What is available will depend on the current situation in the area. You will be paid as you complete your allotted tasks, and we may see fit to reward you further at the conclusion. Excellent. You will now find tasks related to our ongoing campaign against the Xenon in your mission interface. For this episode, I had plans. I was going to compare running missions with collecting crystals and salvaging wrecks. So I've come to Terran space and I'm accessing the Xenon War missions. Unfortunately, no easy or very easy missions to start off with. I love the build missions later on, but right now I don't have the resources for that. Which is a shame, but we'll come back to it in a later episode. I have 1.2 million credits in cash in my pocket. Let's invest that into a new ship to make us some money passively. For some unknown reason, I decided to buy the miner from an Antigone wharf, not the Argon Prime wharf. I'm going to buy a Drill Sentinel Miner, which is a medium-sized ship. These are a good investment at the start, but quickly become outclassed. The major downside to these medium vessels is they cannot repel Kark attacks. You can pick up a good quantity of the larger miners from the build missions from the Xenon War and the Argon Powered Wars. So, this is going to cost us 600,000 credits, but he'll be making money for us in the background. I try to avoid placing these miners in Grand Exchange or anywhere like that, because there's not enough military presence to get rid of the Kark, and you'll quickly lose your investment, and at 600,000 credits at the start, that's quite a lot of money. So I'm going to send this miner to Second Contact 2, which I've already spent quite a bit of time in and explored some of the stations. The particular station that interests me is the silicon refinery there. We're going to get our new buddy to mine the silicon and sell the ore to the refinery. Ah, I see you have been rather busy. That's the Bourne letting us know that we've built the docking platform onto the player HQ. But before that happens, I'm just going to rename the drill. So at a glance, I can see SC2 means second contact 2, that it's a miner and what it's mining. To continue with the storyline, we need to go and dock at the player HQ. So this episode is about running missions, but not the ones I expected it to be about. We're going to continue with the player HQ storyline and hopefully acquire a brand new ship. Looking at the player HQ, you can see that we built the uh, cross section and then the docking module. We have the container storage and the Terran energy cell production left to build. Once the solar panels are up and running, we will have a second source of passive income. Let's go and see what our scientist friend wants from us. Hello there. I decided to hire another crew member. Because I'm off to the player HQ, I thought I would need a new manager. But we have an interesting case of a disappearing crewman. I'm looking forward to working with you. 
so it cost me nearly 4k to hire him. I then watch him get into the ship and disappear into the back room. We'll get back to this disappearing crew member in a bit. Okay. Xenon Sympathizer. And welcome to my player HQ, it looks like everything has been built. Because Grand Exchange solar output is 123%, it means that I get an extra 660 cells an hour, which is all either extra production or extra money in my pocket. For a huge portion of this game, I'm going to be selling these energy cells to make money. It's not until the end game when you start attaching wharfs and shipyards to your player HQ that you'll use the power for anything else. As you can see, I'm looking for that crew member that I just hired, and he's nowhere to be seen. So to continue with the Player HQ storyline, we need to go and find Hiwa's Twin 5. But thanks to the magic of editing, you don't have to watch me find it. Oops. I must admit, I am beginning to feel a bit tense. I do hope this goes to plan. I have further refined the plan. Please take a look. And there she is, an uncrewed Osprey Vanguard, just left for us lying around in space.
sir. We don't want this cluttering up the travel lanes now, do we? So we'll go and claim it for ourselves. We'll get the Kukri to dock with us and our Osprey. The Osprey comes with two Plasma Cannons Mark IIs facing forward, which are very nice and hard hitting. The rest of the armament is Bolt and Shard turrets, which we'll want to upgrade as soon as we can. And by that I mean we're going to need to grind Argon Federation to 10 so we can get the uh, Flak turrets. Well, let's get focusing on this mission. I have further refined the plan. Please take a look. So we have a very easy mission of escort the decoy freighter. Well, if people are going to leave cargo pods lying around, I'm just going to pick them up. Please protect this ship from any harm. While it is a decoy, I would rather no harm comes to the crew.
Yes, I had actually match speed with the wrong vessel. Oops. I'm going to be chased by two ships in a minute. It's hardly a threat because I'm sat in a brand new ship with turrets. Ooh, this needs a lot of upgrades. It does feel like I'm piloting a brick at the moment, but all the more reason to earn lots of money so I can afford those upgrades, right? This installation is equipped for habitation of all races, and this room seems to be some sort of research area. I expect I could spend years poring over the data contained in these systems. Hello there! Yes, I have already made some progress. There appears to be several things we can research at this facility. Please take a look. As you can see, there is much to do. 
I personally find mention of this teleportation irresistible, but I leave it up to you to decide what we research first. Please note that these research items have certain requirements. It appears some Terran technology was being used to research teleportation over long distances. If we wish to improve the fundamental capabilities of a ship, we must first be able to tear it apart and put it together again. For that, we will need nanite technology. Nanites are quite regulated, but not illegal. I may, however, need to push them beyond usual operating standards in order to achieve our goal. I will direct you to a contact of mine. He is quite skilled at moving restricted technology. Now that we have our player HQ and it's fully operational, let's give it its proper name. Let's get our HQ making us some passive income. We're going to set the price of the cells to 12 credits each. We're going to reserve 2000 cells for our own personal use. And there's our first sale. We've now unlocked the potential of the player HQ. We now have the opportunity to start working on the research. As you noticed, I didn't choose the teleportation research, but instead went for the ship module upgrades. That will be covered in a future episode. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the other side.